All right, the time is 6.02. I call this meeting to order. Today is June 21st, 2022. This is a special board meeting of the San Benito CISD Board of Trustees. Okay, I begin with roll call. Ms. Janie Lopez. Present. Mr. Oscar Medrano. Present. Mr. Rudy Corona. Dr. Ariel Cruz. Present. Mr. Orlando Lopez. Present. Mr. Mario Silva. Present. Ms. Teresa Cervellon. Present. Mr. Stephen Weller. Present. Excuse me. Present. Thank you. And I'm here. We do have a quorum. We go ahead and begin with uh, action agenda item 2.1, discussion, consideration, and possible approval to accept gifts and bequest for the 2021-2022 school year. Ms. Cervellon. Yes, I ask that the board uh, approve and accept the gifts and bequests for 21-22 school year as presented. Okay, ladies and gentlemen of the board, those items were placed in uh, board docs for your review. If there are, are there any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, I have a motion to approve uh, the gifts and bequests for the 2021-22 school year. So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Oscar Medrano, a second by Mario Silva. All those in favor? Raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did you vote yay, Mr. Lopez? All right, thank you, sir. Item 2.2, discussion, consideration, and possible approval of budget amendments for the 2021-22 school year. Ms. Cervellon. Yes, I ask that the board approve budget amendments for the 21-22 school year as presented. Those items are also placed in your board docs, uh, board members. Are there any questions? Okay, if not, do I have a motion to approve the budget amendments for the 21-22 school year? Okay, we have a motion by Mario Silva. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Janie Lopez. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, motion carries 6-0. Item 2.3, discussion, consideration, and possible approval regarding purchases over 25,000. Ms. Cervellon. Yes, um, I ask the board approve all purchases over 25,000 as presented. Okay, do uh, those items and, and the list of purchases over $25,000 for the 22-23 school year are provided for you in board docs and I think there's a hard copy. Yes. Are there any questions for any of the board members? Yes, are these um, open-ended invoices or those um, estimated amounts? Yes, Ms. I'll defer to Ms. Bettis. These are the total amounts that we have paid plus a little bit more compared to this current year so that we can have one open PO for the entire year. So for all of these that are on this list of purchases, they won't have to be coming to the board for approval at every meeting? Correct, unless it exceeds the amount that's presented. So um, like just for example, what I'm looking at right now is Longhorn bus. That's $93,846. So it would be once it reaches that amount that it would come to the board? Correct. Okay. That's actually a combination of Valley Morningstar, Brownsville Herald, and the McAllen Monitor. Okay, any other questions, board members? I do have a comment um, All right. on this uh, list that we have here, Ms. Edvillon, the first company listed on there, I'm not gonna, name it uh, for the privacy of the company, but um, this is a company that was hired to do some advertising for us. Um, again, I think that it's very important if we keep this company that it needs to be held accountable because uh, in the last five years, we were never presented in any information as to what exactly that this company was being done. And, you know, and so um, just wanted to make sure that they are held accountable uh, and that you all need to, you know, um, do whatever you need to do with that company. Thank you. Yes. I have a question on Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. This is the amount that we pay for the insurance or this is the amount of claims that we have to pay? No, this is, go ahead, Ms. Bettis, I don't wanna answer. It's a combination of the claims and the administrative cost on it as well as any other miscellaneous costs that we have. There are, sometimes it will go a little bit higher than usual 
if we have like a large claim, but we're always notified within two to three weeks before we do get a large claim. Okay. So does this include Um, for bigger staff, Heath and Delgado, that's $220,000, and that was the entire year from May of last year, or is that just the school year, the fiscal year? The, the fiscal, fiscal year, year. Okay. correct. Ma'am, so as far as, uh, Ms. Vicky, so as far as uh, uh, the Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, how often does uh, does uh, uh, does our insurance agent come and give us an update or give you guys an update as far as where we are with our claims and so on and so forth? Because I haven't seen them, I haven't seen them come in and present at the board at all. Uh, good Bruce. evening, uh, board president, members of the board, Ms. Avion. Um, we regularly get updates. We have weekly meetings um, with our insurance agent of record and Blue Cross Blue Shield. And they are ready to provide any kind of um, presentation should the board choose. Well, yeah, you know, uh, yes, Dr. Cruz, it, you know, honestly, as far as the insurance is concerned, of course, because we're so funded, so it goes up and down. I, I think, you know, uh, it's very obvious that, that uh, you know, some board members have questions about certain, certain uh, you know, third-party agencies. This is a third-party contractor himself so, or his company. So I, I think what we should do is have them come and present uh, to, you know, to, uh, to see where we are as far as our, our health plan is concerned and, uh, and you know, any other third party company that, that's out there to come in and present to the board and see what they're doing or not doing or to see what we can do as a whole to, to maximize uh, the efforts. Yes, sir, and we have a meeting scheduled with Ms. Sevillon and our agent of record in Blue Cross Blue Shield coming up this next week so that we can get an update on our current plan. Okay, great, thank you, ma'am, appreciate yes. it. Thank you for that, Dr. Cruz, and I do know that he meets with you all on a weekly basis because there's at least one day a week that he's here or his agent is here, so we thank him for that. But again, board members as well, like Mr. Uh, Lopez mentioned, if there are any concerns or, there, or, or even if it's not a concern, just you want to be uh, more informed as to any one of these third party vendors, you know, uh, we have our committee meetings to where we can bring them uh, up and uh, ask them to come in and uh, make presentations to us. We have, um, like I said, we have bigger staff on here, but we don't have Walsh. They don't have an open PO. That was, uh, that's what I was going to bring up. It's not on the agenda. Uh, request for Wash Gallegos. It's yes. after this. Yes. Is it a follow-up, or we need to vote on it? That's part of it. So we're asking for. Go ahead, Miss Dr. Cruz. Do you want me to answer it for you? So we do have uh, Walsh Gallegos coming on to help us with some of our grievance situations, right. because we need to use somebody separate from our current council. So that is coming Should, forward too. Shouldn't that be an agenda item, or? I yes, believe it's, it's, I believe it's included. It's an attachment, and yes. it's included into the, the purchase of over twenty-five thousand. So it's okay. There. Yes. I have a question uh, on the on the second item. He's charging fifteen thousand. What fifteen thousand for? Where are you looking, sir? On the second item. It's just a separate You see it? Fifteen thousand. Oh, yes, those have been for individual um, grievances that have been filed. Mm -hmm. And because of the amount of work and length of the grievance that has been, wow. I guess, a year in the making, that is the amount that That's has been charged. That's yes. Cool. So those are for the individual areas where right. they have been um, working with our grievances. So I just, I'd like to reiterate, and, and I, I don't know either Dr. Cruz or uh, Ms. Perez or Ms. Avrion can mention, you know, the agenda item right now says uh, a possible approval regarding purchases over $25,000. It's already been made clear through questioning and answering that these amounts that are here, uh, you know, anything above that, then we would have, they would have to come back to the like board. This. The question as to the Walsh Gallegos, uh, my interpretation of where it is as far as in our packet, it's, it, that, although it's not included in that, that two-page vendor list, it is uh, included as an attachment, and I, I'm assuming that that's just added on to that list. Is that correct, Ms. Vicky, or is that separate? It is separate. The separate. list that is, the entire list is for the year 22-23. Okay. The one that's separate for Wash Gallegos is for this current year that we need to pay for this year. So we've exceeded the $25,000 threshold for this current year. So we don't normally spend that much on Walsh, but if we do, then we'll bring it to the board. 
I okay, that makes sense. That makes Thank sense. you. Makes sense. All right, thank you for that clarification. All right, any further questions? If not, do I have an uh, uh, approval of the 20, I'm sorry, approval regarding purchases over 25,000? I moved already. Okay, Oscar Medrano, second. Sorry, I had one more question. Yes, ma'am. Um, the forensic audit, is that gonna be an open PO also? We did discuss that last time. Uh, I know that Ms. Perez also went through and made a projection. And so that's where we added some additional funds so that we could close out the year funding, I'm sorry. And uh, I don't think we're going to expend the entire amount, but um, that was what we did just to be safe. I, we presented it, I think, last meeting, did Couple it with Ms. Pettis? Okay. It's the same thing. Okay, we have a motion by Oscar Medrano. Do I have a second? Uh, second. Can I make a comment? Yes, ma'am. Oh, on the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas, Ms. Yes. Perez, when we did select as a board, when we selected that company, do you remember how many companies had come to present? Because we did have companies come and present to us. I don't remember the exact number. I do recall about five or six people that groups that were here to present. Okay, so we did have options and, and we selected Blue Cross Blue Shield. Correct. Thank you, ma'am. All right, once again, I have a motion on the floor by Oscar Medrano. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mario Silva. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 6 0. All right, item 2.4 discussion, consideration, and possible approval of the 2022 23 compensation plan. Ms. Cervellon. Yes, sir. So I'm going to ask Dr. Cruz to come up and walk us through the compensation plan um, as there has been a couple of adjustments that we'd like to discuss. Okay. Good evening, board president, members of the board, and Ms. Cervillon again. Um, we're excited to bring our 2022-23 compensation plan to the board uh, with a request for a 2% general pay increase. Uh, this is, as far as teachers are concerned, at the 2% market median, and for all other personnel, 2% from midpoint. Um, I'd like to commend the board that we are moving towards best practice and we're utilizing uh, TASB for those recommendations and I believe it's the right thing to do. So thank you. Uh, we have increased the starting pay for our t on our teacher hiring schedule to 50,000. Last year was 48,900. So we're excited to be able to remain competitive with our neighboring districts. Um, the, we have about 71 people that will be receiving adjustments based on that hiring schedule. Um, this hiring schedule and the um, recommendations from TASB as far as any adjust adjustments means that all of our staff will be receiving some kind of increase. Okay. Uh, the following page, page four, we have our administrative professional play, play, pay plans. Um, again, at midpoint, um, this is a 2% increase. We now have 11 pay grades as recommended by TASB. We have, um, you know, shifted a few positions so that there is a little more space in between the different pay grades. Um, we have educators and administrators, unfortunately, leaving our district. Um, in, in high numbers, unfortunately. So what this will allow us to do is to strengthen our plan so that we can recruit and retain individuals. Um, it also allows movement within our organization so that people can advance from one position to the other and, and you know, along with the pay grades as well. So this is aligned to market value. Um, it ensures a high, a strong hierarchy and strong pathways for the jobs and shows our value that we value the positions and of course everything is based on market value. So page six houses our clerical technical pay plans. Um, the overall structure has remained the same from last year. Um, we are strengthening them to market to ensure employee pay is strong and strong structures will call for less adjustments in the future. So this year, uh, since we've moved to 2% increase from the midpoint, uh, that's a, a difference from how we have been managing our increases. Um, previously, we've been percent doing percentages of base pay. So this allows us um, for the whole plan to move together and, and for things to remain better aligned. So we have um, added in or made adjustments to various positions in 
the plan. Um, all have been advised and discussed with Ms. Servillon, uh, have been approved by her. We have our auxiliary pay plan beginning on page nine, again, aligned to be symmetrical and to remain competitive. Moving over to stipends on page 11, uh, please note that this coming year, assistant principals, principals, and directors are not eligible for stipends. Um, our stipends have mostly remained the same with a few adjustments. On page 12, we have um, added in a STEM coordinator assignment, uh, excuse me, stipend. So we're excited to be able to offer that to an employee, one of our employees, whomever is selected to manage those STEM projects for us. Um, our bilingual and ESL stipends have remained the same on page 14. There have been no adjustments to that. Uh, moving on to the performing arts stipends, again, no changes. We did make a, um, a slight adjustment to our middle school sponsors earlier in the school year, and that is carried over in this plan. Uh, our athletic game pay, page 16, again, remains the same at this point, as well as our athletic stipends on pages 17 and 18. Um, coming to our... I have a question. Yes, sir. Do we have a retention stipend? We do, it's, it's coming. Okay. Okay. It's coming up in the plan. We're excited about that. Uh, on page 19, we have all other pay, including our substitutes. Um, we have modified the guest teacher pay so that non-degreed will receive 90, um, non-degreed long-term 100, degree non-certified 125, degree non-certified long-term 135, degree certified 150, and degree certified long-term 165. So we feel that will help us in um, recruiting additional uh, guest teachers for our district, and by the way, we are having a training coming up very soon, and we will continue to do so um, throughout the year as we usually do. Dr. Cruz, um, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. Going back to the stipends, um, I know you said there was a STEM coordinator mm -hmm. stipend. Um, I know that some of the choice campuses have to go through certifications. Do we offer stipends for those? teachers that get that certification? Um, I would need to research what exactly what certifications you're referring to. They do get additional certifications. The STEM stipend is collect is actually being paid out because it's above and beyond the regular school day uh, activities. Okay. And so that's why we're implementing the stipend. I know that we also talked about there may be some future stipend tweaks and also looking at some of our hourly stuff. Um, but again, we're still looking. We haven't done that kind of across the board, looking at other districts and really you know, digging into that. Okay. But that stipend is for above and beyond. Okay, yeah, because I know that I, I think Sullivan and Dr. Garza go through a, additional certification. So I know that they have to have a certain amount of teachers at those campuses that have that label yeah they are all appropriately certified for their assignments there oh no no not the, um i guess so that the campus can be certified as a like a steam campus there are certain teachers at that campus that have to get like an aspect okay. certificate or training okay training. we'll look into it, later. it may be the training and, and mm -hmm. we're happy to review that okay yes so we have on page um, 21 our summer school stipends. Uh, we continue with a hog grant and we have included our Greyhound Academy should they continue in the future. Um, on page 22, our after school program, um, we have removed the Project RISE grant uh, items because that grant is no longer in existence. And on page 23, our retention stipend. Uh, to be eligible, uh, a person must be a full-time employee and actively employed by September 1st. Um, employees will receive a $2,000 lump sum to be paid out in September. Yes. Page 24 has our teacher incentive allotment information, uh, same as our previous compensation plan. And then the following pages include the calendars that have already been board approved, which will be uh, included for publication on our website. 
Dr. Cruz, great job on, on the, all the work that you guys did collaboratively on this compensation plan. Uh, I, I do want to commend TASB as well. When they came in and did the, the presentation on a compensation plan, it, it, I'm very proud to say that our district is, is pretty much up there where they need to be as far as, as other districts are concerned. Uh, the only area that was a, a focus uh, brought to our attention, uh, one of the main focuses was that auxiliary staff where we will need to go uh, in and make those uh, salary adjustments. You alluded to that earlier at the, at the onset of your presentation and, and we're talking about roughly about how many employees that that will affect as far as those uh, salary adjustments? Uh, about 71 people. 71 people? All right. For teaching. For teachers, yes. Okay. And so as changes are made in our, um, in our assignments and duties, those changes have to be made uh, throughout. This is just a snapshot in time Correct. at this time. All right, thank you. Yes, thank you, board. All right, any questions? With this 2% proposal um, increase for our staff, um, Ms. Servion, how does that look for our um, fund balance? Uh, well, right now, again, we're still looking and we're still adjusting. I know that we talked about the 800,000 that we're going to be using out of federal. I know that we have another 275,000 that we've also allocated towards that effort. Uh, and we're still looking. So um, I don't think it should be a huge impact at all. That's good. And, and, and I think one of the things that we as a board need to take into consideration as well is uh, this infl the inflation cost around the, uh, all around the country, the gas prices, I mean, are, are at, at, at the highest I've ever seen that I remember seeing. So it's very important that, that we, uh, we uh, look into that compensation for our staff. Uh, you know, in addition to that uh, uh, longevity or that other stipend that you mentioned earlier. So I think it's very well deserved. And again, right now we do have a, a healthy uh, fund balance. Uh, thank you to ESSER as well, and, and as uh, we mentioned earlier, I believe Mrs. Uh, uh, Ms. Lopez mentioned, you know, I know that you all are, are working diligently and looking for funds and looking where uh, uh, there may have been some that, that needed to be moved over to, to the right functions or whatever, but uh, I, uh, I applaud you all for the hard work, and I think it's a very well-deserved uh, consideration for our teachers and staff. I know that we want to ensure that we not only attract our teachers, but retain our teachers okay. and, uh, and all our staff. Uh, we put a lot of hard work, as they do, into growing themselves and into you know standing there and taking the helm and being in front of our kids. And they're the ones that you know make us or break us day in and day out. So we wanted to make sure that was our primary focus. Let's take care of our teachers and then let's take care of all our staff. And so that's why we started looking, we started scrubbing, and we started seeing where we could reallocate. We looked at our programs, what programs are necessary. Uh, do we have a duplicate? Are there overlaps? Are there something we can bring back? And that has been like you, a team effort. We have our instructional people, you know, I sat down with Ms. Cornett and we're looking at, you know, what do we need to move the needle forward for our kids and for our teachers, but by the same token, what do we need to spend? and what do we not need to spend? Because we want to make sure that our staff has the compensation that they deserve. Although we could never pay you all what you deserve, exactly. but you know. <laughs> Thank but. you for that. I got a comment, Ms. Sabrion. I want to, you know, uh, once again, you know, it's that time of the year where, you know, where we try to, like you said, you know, we, we always try to help our staff as much as we can with compensation, you know, increases and so on and so forth and stipends and all that good stuff. So I think it's very important since uh, I think Ms. Um, uh, Dr. Cruz mentioned something very important, you know, that we're losing, we're losing staff. So uh, in order for us to get quality staff, I, I think we need to be competitive. And I think uh, we need to do that uh, like you guys are doing, you know, just to make sure that we can, you know, continue moving forward and, and attracting good quality, uh, you know, professionals to educate our kids. Because, uh, yeah, we are losing staff, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, but we're going to continue moving forward the best way we can to, to continue to, to uh, increase their salaries or help them as much as we can. Thank you. And I also want to, I know I've, I forgot to mention, uh, but I want to thank Dr. Cruz and, and Ms. Perez because every time that I'm like, no, we have to find money, no, we have to, they'll, you know, they'll come in and they'll be there with me trying to, like, look for a different way, think out of the box, let's be creative, you know, we need to support our staff. And so I want to thank them also for their hard work because they have put in a lot of hard work into this. Thank you, ladies. We appreciate you. 
Yes, thank you very much for looking into this, and I'm glad that we're going to be able to do this. Um, I, uh, I'm a big numbers person, and when I looked at the census uh, about a month ago or so, I saw that uh, our average income earner here is about 14000 and if they're spending $400 a month on gas, you know, where does that put them, right? And so anything we can do to help our staff, um, I really appreciate you all taking care of that and looking into these numbers. All right. With that said, do I have a motion to approve the pro proposed budget? No. no. I'm sorry. Do you to approve the 2022-2023 compensation plan? So, so moved. moved. Okay. We have a motion by Janie Lopez. Second. A second by Oscar Medrano. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 6-0. Okay. Item 2.5, discussion, consideration, and possible approval of proposed budget for the 2022-2023 school year. Mr. Rayon. Yes, sir. Um, I would also like to recommend for approval of our proposed budget for the 22-23 school year as presented. Okay. As, uh, as you all know, we had the, bu uh, the budget, the proposed budget uh, uh, presentation earlier today. So if there are no questions, do I have a motion to approve the budget for the 22-23 school year? So moved. Okay. We have a motion by Oscar Medrano. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Janie Lopez. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 6-0. Okay, item 2.6 reads consideration of a proposed non-renewal of a term contract event eventuary hearing before the board on proposed non-renewal of the term contract of L. Hinkle. And basically, as per legal request, all we need to do is we need a motion to uh, uh, accept the, the non-renewal of uh, L. Hinkle. So do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, motion by Oscar Medrano. Do I have a second? Second by Mario Silva. All those in favor, raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Motion carries six, zero. Next item is closed meeting in accordance with Texas Government Code Open Meetings Act. The board may move into closed session for the following reasons. Section 551.071, for the purpose of a private consultation with the board's attorney on any or all subjects or matters authorized by law. Section 551.074, for the purpose of considering the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline or dismissal of a public officer or employee, or to hear complaints or charges against a public officer or employee, and section 551.082, certain school board deliberations. The time is 629, we move into executive session. And Mr. Mr. Board President, uh, before you go into close, yes, don't sir. interrupt you, pardon me. Um, uh, given uh, uh, what we know about uh, the non-renewal matter. I don't believe there's any need to go in under uh, items 3.4 or 3.5. So just to clarify for the record, are we going in under items 3.1 through 3.3? Thank you for that, Mr. Uh, Weller. So once again, just to uh, clarification purposes, so we all are under uh, on the same page, we are uh, convening into executive session for items 3.1 to 3.3. We exclude item 3.4 to 3.5. It is 6.30. Now we move into executive. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. The time is 6.58, and I call this meeting back to order in open session. Uh, we move on to item 4.3, employment, resignations, retirements, and terminations. Ms. Cervellon. Yes, sir. I... Um I move forward that we accept all the recommendations as discussed in closed session. Okay, Ms. Cervion has made a recommendation to accept the resignations, retirements, and terminations. Do I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. Okay, we have a motion by Oscar Medrano. Second? Second. By Mario Silva. All those in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Item 4.4, discussion, consideration, and possible... Oh, you know what? We didn't even wait for Mr. Weller. Is he back on? <laughs> <laughs> Not that we need him. But uh, we do. No, we don't. I know we don't. Let's just move on. <laughs> Item 4.4, discussion, consideration, and possible action of employment of principal for Dr. Raul Garza, STEAM Academy. Ms. Oh, hold on. Let's try it again. Item 4.4, discussion, consideration, and possible action of employment of principal for Dr. Raul Garza, STEAM Academy. Ms. Cervellon. Yes, uh, I move that we accept the recommendation um, for our Dr. Garza, STEAM Academy principal uh, principal name is Victor Monreal. Okay, Mr. Rayon has made a recommendation that we approve the employment of Mr. Monreal as principal for Dr. Raul Garza STEAM Academy. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Mario Silva. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ariel Cruz. 
Okay, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 4-0. Okay, items 4.5 and 4.6 were struck off the, uh, off the agenda. So with that said, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Oscar Medrano, a second by Mario Silva, and all those in favor? Motion carries 4-0. The time is 6.59. We're adjourned. Everybody, thank you for being here tonight, and good night. <laughs>